The following is a recap of the 2007 Japanese film Kuro Obi, which translates as Black Belt in English. The film begins in 1932, in the setting of Japanese-occupied Manchuria, called Manchu Kuo. Three karateka, or karate practitioners, Gyeyu, Choe, and Taikon, train diligently under the careful instruction of their sensei, Aiken Shibahara, at an isolated dojo in the Manchu Kuo wilderness. Here the three karateka work on kata, or forms, body conditioning and other karate drills. One day, while the three karateka hit Makiwara poles, they are interrupted by a unit of imperial military police led by Captain Kichi Tanihara. Tanihara states that by the authority of General Goda, the karateka must vacate their dojo for use by the military police. Sensei Shibahara has Gyeyu retrieve a document signed by the emperor, which states they have permission to train at the dojo. But Tanihara promptly tears the document up and throws it on the ground. The quick-tempered Taikon attempts to fight the captain, but he is held back by Choe who in the process, touches Tanihara's shoulder. Tanihara reacts to this by drawing his katana and cutting Choe under the arm, severely injuring him. Another soldier then attempts to restrain Taikon but is knocked out with a punch to his jaw, before he can even draw his sword. Taikon then invites Tanihara to fight him inside the dojo, and the soldiers follow. Sensei Shibahara reminds Taikon that his karate is only defensive, and forbids him to strike his opponent, but Taikon has other plans. Another soldier volunteers to fight for Tanihara, but like the previous soldier, he is knocked down by a punch before he can even attempt a strike with his sword. Another katana-wielding soldier takes on Taikon but is quickly met with a kick to his stomach. After he recovers, the soldier makes another attempt, but this time Taikon kicks his chest, and the blow kills the soldier almost instantly. Sensei Shibahara then instructs Taikon to stand down, and asks Gia Yu to take his place. Gia Yu is able to follow his sensei's teaching, by using only defensive blocks in a duel against Tanihara. However, the blocks are also offensive strikes, and by the end of the duel, Tanihara's injured arms are unable even to hold his sword. After this, the military police leave the dojo. Life begins to return to normal, however, Sensei Shibahara suddenly collapses from an unnamed illness. Soon after, Shibahara's students sit by their dying sensei, and again he bades them not to fight. Taikon asks his sensei why they learn offensive techniques, if not to use them, but Shibahara states they must direct their skill, inward, rather than outward. Shibahara then asks Choe to hold on to his black belt, until Choe can decide who will become his successor. Shibahara says the color of the belt is that of purity, and strong will, and that they will understand when the time comes. After these words, Shibahara dies. The three students perform a funeral for their sensei, but soon after, they are again interrupted by the military police. This time, the unit state that General Goda has decided to use Shibahara's karate in the Imperial Army's training, and all three of Shibahara's students are to report to their base at once. The three karateka agree, but on their way to the base, they are cut off by Captain Tanihara's son and daughter. They inform Gyeyu they have come to seek revenge for the death of their father, who took his own life rather than live with the disgrace of his defeat. Taikon seems satisfied with this development, as he had warned Gyeyu to kill his opponent, rather than leave him alive but humiliated. He tells Choe not to interfere, and they leave Gyeyu to reluctantly fight Tanihara's children on his own. As Tanihara's children attack, Gyeyu tries to follow his sensei's teaching to only defend, but he seems unsure of himself and hesitant. Gyeyu puts up little resistance when Tanihara's daughter stabs him with her spear, then pushes him off the edge of a cliff overlooking a river, where he falls, seemingly to his death. Choe seems distraught at this turn of events, but soon the group moves on. Later, at the military base, Taikon takes to his role as karate instructor, and teaches the troops offensive sparring. Choe reminds him of their sensei's philosophy on offensive fighting, but Taikon is intent on teaching the troops his own way. Elsewhere, it seems Gyeyu survived the fall, as he awakens in the home of a local farmer and his family. After he recovers, he helps the family with farm work but never reveals to them his background. At the base Taikon teaches one skilled student the art of striking without telegraphing, and illustrates that he could have killed the student with an untelegraphed strike. General Goda interrupts the class and invites Taikon to a celebration, but Taikon seems unimpressed with the general's disrespectful attitude. Later, General Goda and his men drink with several geisha, while Taikon sits silently on his own. Taikon seems to view the party as an obligation, but regardless, one of the geisha manages to break through his icy exterior, and he ends up spending the night with her. At the farm, we learn the patriarch of the family, Kankichi, has been gambling, a gang of local Yakuza pressure him to sell his daughter in order to pay off his debts, but he refuses. Gyeyu watches this, but does not interfere. Meanwhile, the military police attempt to confiscate another karate dojo, 
as they did with Shibahara's dojo, but this time they have Taikon on their side. When the head sensei refuses, Taikon easily defeats him in a duel, and after he falls, Taikon makes sure to kill his opponent, just as he had advised Giyu to do. We soon learn the military police have taken over five dojos with Taikon's help, and General Goda plans to take over more. Goda reveals some of these will be used for military training, while the others will be converted into brothels, for his own personal profit. While meditating in a field, Giyu sees the spirit of his sensei, and is inspired to return to his karate practice. He performs a kata, but unbeknownst to him, Kenkichi's son Kento is watching. The Yakuza return to the farm, and this time they demand Kenkichi's daughter Hana come with them. Kento pleads with Giyu to stop them, but when confronted by one of the Yakuza, Giyu does nothing, and lets them leave with the girl. Kento tells Giyu he will rescue his sister on his own, but after he leaves, Giyu has a change of heart and joins him. At the base, Shoei confronts Taikon about Goda's plan, but Taikon says that is none of his concern, he only wants to fight and defeat the strongest opponents. The two are then interrupted by Sensei Togo, another of Shibahara's former students, who has come to pay his respects to the late master. Togo says he has heard of Taikon's recent actions, and believes he is unworthy of Shibahara's black belt. In response, Taikon attempts to hit Togo with the same untelegraphed strike he demonstrated on his student, but Togo easily blocks it. Later, Gia Yu and Kento arrive at the gambling house where Hana is being held. Kento demands the Yakuza tell him where his sister is, but instead they attack Gia Yu. Again, Gia Yu only uses defensive blocks against the Yakuza's attacks, but these injure his opponents each time they attempt to hit him. In this way, he takes out a number of Yakuza until one holds a knife to Kento's neck. After this, Gia Yu no longer defends himself, and is severely beaten by the Yakuza. Kento manages to escape the gambling house, and calls for help from the nearby buildings. As it happens, Taikon is in a nearby brothel and hears Kenta yell Giyu's name. He follows Kenta to the Yakuza who have now tied up Giyu and are preparing to throw him in a nearby river. When Taikon does not identify himself, the Yakuza attack him, but he easily takes down four Yakuza thugs with his superior fighting skill. Realizing they are outmatched, the Yakuza flee, and Taikon unties Giyu. Taikon then reprimands Giyu for ending up in such a pitiful state, and tells him he was wrong for listening to their master's teaching of defense only. Giyu does not disagree with Taikon, and it seems even he begins to question whether or not Shibahara was right. When Kenta also reprimands Giyu for not using his strength against the Yakuza, Giyu decides he must take action. Nearby, General Goda arrives at the gambling house to see the new girls who have recently been taken. He takes an interest in Hana, but before he can take her with him, he notices the house owner Daimonji has been choked unconscious by Giyu. Giyu then applies pressure to Goda's neck, rendering him unconscious as well, and shortly after Giyu escapes with Hana and the other girls who were being held there. The following day, Goda instructs his men to inform the police that Giyu has kidnapped these girls, and to capture him alive as Goda intends to execute him personally. He then leaves the gambling house to watch Taikon's latest match against the highly skilled Sensei Togo. Before the match, Taikon tells Togo the winner of this match will inherit Shibahara's black belt, and he instructs Choei to see the match through to the end. As they begin fighting, both Karatika are able to defend against each other's attacks, however after a few exchanges Taikon lands a hard punch to Togo's torso. After another exchange, Taikon takes Togo down and breaks his ribs. Togo's students surround their master, but Taikon knocks one of them over with a side kick. Togo continues to fight, but he is hit repeatedly by Taikon who renders him nearly defenseless. Choe yells at Taikon to stop, but Taikon ignores him, and proceeds to kill Togo with a kick to his head. Choe asks Taikon why he had to go so far, and Taikon replies that it is better to kill one's opponent than let them live in shame. Enraged, Choe attacks Taikon, but Taikon easily deflects his kick and knocks him down with a punch to his stomach. Taikon tells the defenseless Choe that Shibahara's black belt is now his. Just then, one of the military police arrive and inform General Goda that they have found Giyu. Before the military police leave to capture him, Goda tells them they have permission to use deadly force with their firearms. Choe pleads with Taikon to save Giyu, but Taikon says this is none of his concern. Choe then tells Taikon he has no right to Shibahara's black belt, but again Taikon ignores this. We learn Giyu and the girls he rescued have been hiding at a local temple. Kento arrives there with news that the military police are on their way, and he says he wishes Taikon was there, as he is strong enough to defeat the police. Giyu tells him that true karate is not for attacking people, and that it means everything to him. Elsewhere. Taikon unboxes Shibahara's black belt, but as he stares at it, 
Choi's words echo through his mind. It seems even he does not believe he has earned the black belt yet. Near the temple, Yeyu, Kankichi, Kenta, and the rescued girls all walk out to meet a gang of Yakuza led by Daimonji, as they approach. Yeyu tells them to leave, but Daimonji is intent on taking the girls with them. Both sides prepare to fight, and it seems the odds are in the Yakuza's favor, until Choe emerges and joins Gyeyu's side. Before the Yakuza can attack, General Goda and his men arrive and threaten to open fire if Gyeyu does not surrender peacefully. Without fear of the guns, Gyeyu approaches Goda, who steps back in fear. Goda tells his men to open fire on Gyeyu, but before they can, Tycon emerges and holds him hostage. Tycon threatens to kill Goda with his bare hands if he does not tell his men to stand down. Goda agrees, but when Tycon releases him, he attempts to shoot Tycon, who quickly knocks him unconscious before he can. Everyone present then stands back as Tycon approaches Gyeyu. As he does, the image changes to black and white, the crowd vanishes and now Gyeyu and Tycon stand facing each other, each wearing their karate gi. Tycon gives Shibahara's black belt to Choe and tells him to bear witness to their fight, then the two walk away and face each other in a solitary field. It seems they will finally fight each other to see who really does deserve Shibahara's black belt. As the fight begins, Tycon aggressively attacks, but like earlier, Gyeyu only blocks and defends. After Tycon knocks Gyeyu down with a kick, he yells at him to attack back. Gyeyu stands but is knocked down by Tycon again, this time with a punch. Tycon tells Gyeyu that he will not win with only defensive techniques, but when Gyeyu stands he continues not to attack, and takes blow after blow from Tycon, that is, until Gyeyu dodges Tycon's kick and lands his first strike, to Tycon's abdomen. Choe, Hana and Kenta watch on as Gyeyu finally decides to fight offensively against Tycon. The two karate masters now fight head to head, and as they do, Gyeyu recalls his sensei's words, he must direct his skill, inward. The two fall into a muddy field, and are soon covered in mud as they fight blow for blow against each other. Now exhausted, both karateka refuse to give an inch and continue to hit each other while rolling around in the mud. Although they are exhausted, both fighters manage to stand. Tycon attempts one final blow on Gyeyu, but Gyeyu blocks this, and knocks Tycon down with a strike to his head. Gyeyu then falls next to Tycon from exhaustion, and as the two lay there, Tycon tells Gyeyu that he finally understands their sensei's words. The man who seals off his opponent's attack is the stronger, he says. Gyeyu tells Tycon that if it was not for his offensive style, he would not have found their master's meaning. Tycon tells Gyeyu that Shibahara's black belt belongs to him, and after this, he dies from the damage caused by the final blow. Despite their differences, both Gyeyu and Choe mourn Tycon. Choe hands Gyeyu Shibahara's black belt, but Gyeyu places it on Tycon's body. In the final scene, we see Tycon performing a kata while wearing Shibahara's black belt. His image fades, and Gyeyu emerges, also performing a kata but with an ordinary black belt. The narration tells us that Gyeyu honored Tycon's last wish, and formed a dojo, with Choe's help. It was small but many karateka aspired to train there. As the credits roll, Gyeyu performs his kata until the image fades to black. What you have been watching is a recap of the 2007 film Kuro Obi, directed by Shunichi Nagasaki. It should be noted that this film is unique due to casting real karate black belts in the main roles, rather than actors or stuntmen with a general martial arts background. Akihito Yagi, who plays Gyeyu is a ninth dan in Goju-ru Karate. Tatsuya Naka, who plays Taikon holds a 7th dan in Shotokan Karate, and Yukamio, who plays Choe is a 1st dan in Kyokushin Karate. These actors gave the film's karate choreography a uniquely authentic feel. If you would like to see more martial arts movie recaps like this one, be sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the like button, and the notification bell. Thanks for watching and see you on the next video. Oss.